In today's video, we're going to go ahead and discuss some of the like technicalities behind utilizing the Canon ADD. So, I've been getting asked a lot of questions about what type of ISO do I use and what type of aperture and what do I keep the film rate at, um, even the type of lens. So, I want to go ahead and discuss some of the methods that I've used, um, which I have kind of already discussed in previous videos. So as you can see, I have some lighting set up here uh, because it's dark out now. So I'm going to try to get as much light in as possible. That way I can go ahead and show you the differences on how to get that like that crisp and clean image. So I'm going to go switch right now to this Sony RX4. I did not get the Sony RX5, the Mark V. I didn't really see that much of a difference. This camera here does justice for me. I also have the Canon 80D, so there's really no reason for me to go back and forth to purchase another camera, and I believe it's going for about $1,000. This camera here is still going for around like $850, uh, maybe $900, I'm not too sure. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to this Sony. I'm going to show you my setup, and then I'm going to film and show the settings on the Canon 80D and show you the different ISO levels. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Right now I switched over to the Sony uh, Mark IV. Now I'm gonna show you my setup really quick and then we're gonna get into some of the settings on this camera and show you how I usually shoot my, my videos. All right. So I just quickly set this up. I have three Studio Pro lights. I did a whole video on the Studio Pro lights. I believe they shoot up about 3,000 watts in total and there is five bowls within each one and if you want you can go ahead and adjust the lights so this one flicks on two that one flicks on two the one in the middle just flicks on one light so depending on how much light that you need and that's pretty much it when I'm inside I will put these um, Two of these lights will kind of shoot over the camera and I'll have one light which will hit the object which is kind of, which will be you, right? You'll be the subject and it'll hit the subject and that way you get good lighting. You don't necessarily need these obviously if you're outside or if you're shooting during the day but here am I inside and we're going to go ahead and just talk about that for a bit. Alright, so here's what I usually have here. Let this focus in. My ISO right now is at a 320. Now, the higher you go, and this is how sometimes you'll achieve that white background, but the higher you go, now if it's nighttime, you want to go up a little bit higher, but if you get too high, the, the camera, it's going to get noisy. You're going to see those little pixels. So the goal here is you want to try to maintain the lowest ISO possible, but bring in as much light as possible. All right, so how do you do that? Now, it depends on a couple of factors. Number one, how lit up is the room? Or if it's daylight and you're filming outside, great, you got natural sunlight. If you go down here to your aperture, see mine's down all the way. So that means my lens, right? So let's look at the lens really quick. It means the inside of that lens is opened up all the way. So it's, it, it's letting the most amount of light in, okay? So now with this lens here, which I'll, I'll wanna show you, this lens is the 10 to 18 millimeter. So it shoots, very wide so if I open this lens up you could see that it's catching this light and that door right over here okay so the lowest I can go right now is 5.6 so I'm gonna take advantage of that now my frame rate typically when you're filming if you're shooting at let's let's see what I'm shooting at here I'm shooting at a 23.98, right? Full HD. That's FHD's full HD. Typically, your frame rate.
Rule of thumb is you want to keep it doubled, right? So if you're shooting at approximately 30, you want to double your frame rate to 60, right? To get that like movie type scene. Now, if you're shooting just a regular video where you're in front of the uh, in front of the camera, you're doing something for YouTube like I'm doing right now, it's all right for me to play with the frame rate. Now, as I go down, my image is getting brighter, okay? Now I'm gonna switch over to this camera and I'm gonna show you what those different settings look like so you get an idea. All right, now utilizing the Canon ADD, the settings right now, the frame rate is currently at 25. So this is gonna be our object, okay? So we're gonna focus on this picture and we're gonna test out the different settings, okay? So right now, my uh, my frame rate is at 25, my aperture is at 5.6, and my ISO level is at 200. Now, usually when I'm shooting, right now, as you can see, it's, the screen is getting darker because I'm picking up my frame rate to 60. So if I'm shooting at about 30 frames per second, I usually double my frame rate. My aperture is still at 5.6, and that's the lowest that I can go right now on this particular lens. That's why you would have more advantages on different lenses. And it all depends on what you're shooting, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust my ISO and I'm gonna bring it up. Right now it's at 200. And now it's at 500. Now I'm gonna bring it up to six. I think six is kind of taking away some of the clarity, some of the real true colors of this picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop it down to 500. Okay, I'm going to back this up. So this is what it looks like now at a 60 frame rate, a 5.6 aperture, and remember it's a 10 to 18 millimeter lens, okay? And I have it on 500 ISO. So those are my settings right now. And the picture is clear, it's very crisp. When you get that really noisy picture is when you're picking up your ISO levels a little too high because you have no light or you're at a friend's house or you just so happen to be just filming at night. Whatever the case may be, you wanna be careful with how high you bring up that ISO. And maybe you could test it out by taking a couple of pictures um, or switch up your lens. So if you know that you're gonna be shooting at night a lot, maybe you get a different lens with a lower aperture. So I'm gonna show you with me in front of the camera, I just brought down my frame rate to 30, okay? Now if my frame rate went down to 30, you know that I could not change my aperture, right? Because my aperture is at the lowest possible. So that 5.6 is the lowest, which means the lens has opened up to its max, letting the um, as much light as possible into the lens, right? Now, if I bring my aperture for 5.6, right now it's at a 10, all right? It's a little bit dark, I could tell. So I'm gonna bring it back down. Now it's at 6.3. You can tell the background's pretty white. You could see me perfectly clear. And now I'm gonna drop my ISO. So my ISO is at 320 right now, which is also totally fine. So now I'm gonna switch back to the Canon and show you the settings that it's on now. And that's pretty much it. You always wanna keep your camera in manual mode. And when I switch back to the Sony, sorry, not the Canon. Once I switch back to the Sony, I'm gonna show you uh, where to always keep the camera. And if you're shooting manual, you have total control of your ISO, your aperture, your frame rate. So if you are filming outside, you could just quickly hit the button on top and scroll over lower and higher your aperture, ISO, or your frame rate, whatever factors you're gonna be using. And the more practice that you get, the easier it's going to be. All right, so I'm gonna switch to this right now. And this is set to auto, okay, because I don't, it's a little bit more difficult to play around with the settings on this camera versus this only because A, it's touch screen, I have more access to more things. 
Um, not to say that you could not put this into manual and shoot, but for the sake of this video here, I'm just gonna keep it in auto. Um, even looking at this camera right now, it's about, it's hard to see, but it's about, it's at the, the aperture, the f-stop, the f right, what they call the f-stop, is changing from anywhere from 2.8 to 3.5, and my ISO is just, you know, it's going up and down, but I have so much light in this room, so it's fine. All right, switch over to this. I'm gonna show more settings on the ADD. All right, so this is my setup, right? Before, I was adjusting the ISO from here, my f-stop, and my frame rate, okay? If you're wondering, okay, rule of thumb, why is it is to double? If you're ever looking to try to get that cinematic film look, it's usually filmed, I believe, around 23 frames per second. So they double it to close to 60 to get that motion picture. And that's what our eyes are usually, um, they're used to seeing when you're watching a movie, right? So if you ever watch your, on a brand new TV, you feel the image is so crisp, it's nice, it's clear, but that's not how movies are filmed. Okay, so again, here are my settings. Now I'm gonna drop this down because I want as much light in as possible. So why do I want as much light as possible? The reason why is I want as much light in the lens as possible is so I could lower my ISO because the lower the ISO is the clearer and more crisp the image is going to be to an extent so right now at 400 and now look now I was able to drop it down to 4.5 only because of the amount of light that the camera has picked up so I'm going to turn this camera back on really quick so now it's recording. Now it's at a 4.5 f-stop, which is lower than the 5.3 or 7 that we had earlier because more light was able to come into the camera. Now if you look at the lens, it shows that it goes from a, up to a 4.5 to 5.6. All right, now this is still recording, so I'm gonna come back here. Okay, looking at the Canon now, this is one of the most important things. The focus, all right, as you can tell, you see how it's in manual mode? That's where you wanna keep it. Now, when it's in manual mode, that's when you'll have access to your ISO, your f-stop, your frame rate, and you can switch back and forth. Now, if you have the 70D, I'm not sure if the 70D is touchscreen, which again, that's fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and lower this on the tripod. Okay. Just by looking up here, let it focus. Okay, it doesn't want to focus, there we go. Here's your ISO. So if you click the ISO, see how I'm moving it from 320 to four? So when you're filming outside, you'll get accustomed to it. You hit it, you play with your ISO. You bring it up and down, okay? And then you can, your AF, your drive, okay? Everything is linked from here. So if you click your drive or your AF, you could do your tracking. Right, where you want the camera to focus. I keep it on autofocus, which is good enough for me. And that's pretty much it. Um, you know, when you're outside, it's daylight. You'll keep your f-stop down very low. And then really, all you need to play with is your ISO, right? So if you have, let's say the sun, so let's say the sun is way too bright. So you, you, could, you could quickly, lower your ISO to lower the amount of light that it's picking up. Or you could take your f-stop and, and tell the lens, well look, it's very sunny out, so I don't want a lot of light coming in. 
So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a clip of a vlog that I was doing, which I never posted, and it was out during broad daylight, and it was snowing, so it was very bright. With the amount of snow that was on the floor and the trees, it was very bright. And I'm gonna show you how this camera, where I believe it was at its lowest settings. My ISO was down to 100. I had to bring my f-stop up because I wanted to let less light in because it was too bright. So I'm out in the park right now, which is right by my house. I don't come here often, only because of the weather right now, but it's definitely nice to come out here and explore. Oh, it's windy. All right, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm gonna go ahead, I might do a review on the Sony Mark IV, and I might do a review also on the GoPro. So I see a lot of videos be going up about the GoPro and some of the different settings that you could use. Um, I did a full review video on that as well. So you can go ahead and check it out. I will, if I remember, I will link it down below. All right, so I will see you guys next time. And a big thank you to all you guys that have been subscribing. I've gained about 42 or 45 subscribers in the past couple of days, and it's just been great. And a lot, a lot of networking on Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere. I post my videos up everywhere, and I really try to get a, Try to reach a, a, a wide network. I don't always rely on just YouTube, but you need to venture out. So for those of you who are new, starting a new vlog, you definitely, definitely need to venture out. Hit up every social media platform and be consistent with your, with your names, whether it's a, a brand name or your own name. Be consistent on all social media sites. And uh, that's about it. All right, see you guys next time. And if you have any other reviews that you would like me to do, I'll go ahead and do them. Just like today's request. And we got the review on the Canon 80D. And the Canon 70D has similar, similar features. And so does the 60D that's in here. And if anyone's wondering, I'm using the Rode Pro mic. Now I did a full review video on how to properly set up this mic. I'm actually gonna show you guys one more time. In order to perfect this mic, I keep the high frequency filter on, I keep it to plus 20 decibels. Now only in manual mode are you gonna be able to go to your menu. This is the, oh it is. So you see sound recording? You set that to manual. So you take it out of auto and you put it into manual. Now, here is the level that you could adjust your mic. Since you have a mic up here, what I do is I drop this down all the way to the bottom and I go four to five notches up and the mic picks up great quality. You might hear a little bit of difference between the Sony Mark IV that I'm filming on now and the uh, audio quality coming out of the Rode Pro mic. So you might hear a difference as I'm switching back and forth with cameras to show you guys how it works out. All right, I put the link to how to utilize the Rode Pro mic down below as well. And I'm also gonna make another video on this to make it short. All right, that's it, I'm done. See you guys later and thank you for your subscriptions, your comments, uh, your likes. I really appreciate it, it does boost up the whole video making process and um, it's great that I have a good network of people that are interested. All right, see you guys later. I forgot to mention one other thing. If you don't have all these lights, and you see I just turned both of these off, the whole point of this review was to let you know that utilizing your ISO, your f-stop, your, your frame rate, is how you're gonna adjust your lighting so you get that crisp, clear picture. You don't necessarily need to have all these lights. And I can flick on the regular light and it really all depends how you have it set up. So I have one light on right now and I got this ceiling light up and it's on 60 frame rate, f-stop's at 4.5, my ISO's at 100. That's it. So. Just keep practicing, play around with it, you'll get it.
that simple. And if you have any questions, you could just come to me. Oh, and one other thing. Make sure to subscribe down below if you like this video. Give it a big thumbs up. Thank you.